What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show Season 2. For those of you who's listening to audio, you can't really see the smile on my face. For those of you watching, you can definitely see the smile on my face. So excited to be back. The new media back in the building, bringing you the content that you all want, that you all want to hear. None of that lousy, distasteful mess that we've been stuck listening to. So we back at it. Um, number one, I want to say thank you to our subscribers and listeners for tuning back in. And I apologize to our subscribers and listening listeners for the long delay. Um, before I get into anything else, let's get straight into the delay. Uh, number one, contractual obligations. Um, those are always very important for those of you who's dealt with contractual obligations. Um, you should understand for those of you that haven't. Uh, contracts are very important. And it's important that you spell out what you want in your contracts that you may come across in life. And saying that, um, however, that also coincided with uh, what we all know the incident to be at the beginning of the season with myself and a teammate, um, Jordan. And quite frankly, if I'm being 100% honest, Jackson and I, we recorded an episode um, right after. And I know everyone was looking for it. Everyone wanted to hear it. And quite frankly, I wanted to allow you the chance to hear what I had to say. I wanted to allow you the chance to kind of take a, a trip in my mind and just maybe understand more. And when we recorded the episode, I hated the way I sounded. Um, and so we simply just didn't release it. I didn't like my tone. I didn't like the things I said. I didn't like the way it came out. I didn't like um, it almost, if you're not careful, it almost comes off as, Unremor unremorseful and distasteful, 100% distasteful, but also um, fast. And what do I mean by fast? Quite frankly, I'm not big into saying things or doing things and then running to my show because it's going to get more ratings. Like, I, I don't really like that game. That's the old media. I, I don't play that game. I don't. I'm, I'm not very interested in that. I think there's a time to speak. And, you know, if the opportunity is there, I'm going to speak. I'm never going to shy away from a topic. But the thing that I had to take into consideration with that is, number one, someone else was affected. And not only one person was affected, but multiple people. Tons of, I mean, however many you want, whatever word you want to use to describe the amount of people, people were affected. And so it wasn't something that just affected me. And so... When you do something that affects someone else, you can't just take yourself into consideration, how you may feel, how it may benefit you, all of those things. And so for me, I'm like, okay, Jordan has to deal with this. Other people have to deal with this. The last thing I need to be doing is sitting here talking about it like it's all fine and dandy. And so for that, I'm sure we probably lost some subscribers. For that, I'm sure we probably lost some listeners. But quite frankly, if that is the case, I'd rather work my butt off and get those listeners and subscribers back and plus more and do it the right way than distastefully saying whatever I can say, tweeting whatever I can tweet um, like the old fart does um, and then run into my show knowing that everyone's going to want to hear what I have to say and raiding sky and through the roof. Like, that's fake. Because they don't want to hear you tomorrow. Because tomorrow you can't talk about the garbage that you did the day before to create your storyline, to create your headline, and then run and talk about it because you know everybody's listening. And so I just don't really like to abide by that method. Um, I more so want to bring you great content. I want to talk basketball with you. I want to teach you basketball. I want to take you through my mind and how I see the game of basketball. And that's what we've always done here, and that won't change now. And so, quite frankly, that was the reason or one of the biggest reasons for the hiatus. And here we are. We're back. Um, I know I saw some people saying, oh, man, Draymond, 
not doing it anymore because they're losing. And it's the, I'm an NBA champion still. Like, <laughs> for the rest of this year, by the way, if we don't win another game, we are the defending NBA champions until further notice. So the whole notion of like, oh, man, they're, they're not playing well. And so, like, I had the worst game of my life in the NBA finals, and I sat in, in front of this computer screen an hour later and talked to you all about it. So as we know, I'm not one that's afraid to talk during the rough times. But like I said, when someone else is affected, that's a different thing for me. And I care about people too much to just glance by that and ignore it. And so because I didn't like the way it sounded, we nixed it. And then there were contra contractual things. And we got those worked out. And we back. Shout out to Jackson holding it down. We're here. And I am so excited to be back. Hope everyone tunes in. Maybe we get more subscribers. Maybe we get more listeners. Maybe we don't. But for those of you that are here, you know I will always give you my best. If you love the dubs, you know that January is a key month for us. Big matchups at home against Phoenix, Brooklyn, Memphis, and on the road against teams like Boston and Cleveland. Going to be a lot of fun to watch on television. But what if you actually could be at those games? For last-minute amazing deals on tickets, not just to the Dubs games, but your favorite NBA team, check out Game Time, the fastest-growing ticketing app in the U.S. And it doesn't stop with the NBA. Game Time has tickets to the NFL playoffs, NHL, and college basketball games even concerts and comedy shows too. So if you're in New York and you want to go see the Knicks take on Cleveland or the Lakers, Game Time has you covered. Or if you want to see Adam Sandler live tonight, this weekend, anytime soon, download the Game Time app, create an account, and redeem code GREEN in all caps for $20 off your first purchase. Terms may apply. Again, create an account, enter the code GREEN, that's G-R-E-E-N, for $20 off. No matter where you live, get out and have some fun this week. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. But getting into the episode, things that we really want to talk about. Number one, um, the Warriors season. Our season is a little weird, as you know. Best record in the league at home at 17 and 2, which is incredible. Worst record in the league on the road at three and 16, which is awful. What do you make of that? Well, let's see. I think, number one, it's definitely a mental thing. It's definitely a confidence thing because when I look back and I play all the games out, all the road games especially, in my head and looking back on the season, you give a game away at Orlando, give a game away at Charlotte. New Orleans, both New Orleans games, um, none of us played. I mean, not none of us guys played, but starters, most starters didn't play. Loom maybe played a few minutes. Younger guys played, and no knock to our younger guys, but it's difficult to win on the road as it is, as you can see in our record. Down four or five of your top nine rotation away, it's tough. And so, not their fault, but you add those games in. You get a back-to-back -back in Brooklyn, which no one really plays in. That's five of the, of the 16 losses. Detroit Pistons. Gade out in the way, although they played well. Can't take nothing away from the Pistons in Detroit. Played well, but we kind of gave that one away. Indiana. Crazy game. Could have possibly won it. Could have won either way. What am I getting at? I said all of that to say, you look at those games alone, and you're sitting here, we're sitting here at 500 on the road. No one's upset. And quite frankly, if we're 500 on the road, I think that may put us in first place in the West. Again, what are you getting at, Draymond? What I'm getting at is this. You lose a few games early on on the road. 
tension starts to build. Not tension amongst the team, but tension amongst the world. Tensions, tension amongst the basketball world. Um, confidence starts to linger a little bit. It starts to waver a little bit. And then it becomes a thing. Then it's, now it's a thing that you're really battling against, and it's a, more of a mental hurdle than it should be. And so when I look at our team on the road and our team at home, it's two different teams, but it's not. And here's why. The margin for error that you have on at home, you don't have near that margin of error when you're on the road. And I personally don't think we've adjusted to that well throughout the season. Like our margin for error. You know, the same passes we'll, we'll make at home, we make on the road. The same shots we'll take at home, we take on the road. And you can't do that. It has to be more methodical. It has to be um, a lot more thoughtful. And we've struggled in that area. As a leader, I can take that on the chin. I have to be better. I have to do what I can to make sure that we're better in that area. And I think we will. I think this homestand on riding a five-game uh, win streak currently, I think this homestand will help a lot because confidence is confidence, right? And so to struggle with confidence and going on a roll because of things that went wrong early and then it's like you're snake bit and all of a sudden nothing can go right. And winning at home, like I said, 5-0 and to start this road trip, uh, by the time you hear this episode, it should be 6-0. and I mean, to start this homestand, excuse me, not road trip. You build up the confidence, and now you go on a roll. You go on a roll with a different mindset. You go on a roll with the mindset that you need to win road games. And so I think we're building towards that. But most importantly, home and road, like, yeah, that's – that. I make, you can make something out of that because it is something, it's a big deal. But I make more of this team is starting to find its identity. And for me, that's more important than what the home record says right now and what the road record says right now. Over the last five games, I think this team is truly starting to build an identity. And every great team has an identity. When you walk in the gym, you know that team is going to do X, Y, and Z. We haven't had that all year. We have not had an identity. And I think it takes time to build an identity, some longer than others. I think we're starting to build an identity. And that is huge, be that we're missing Steph Curry, we're missing Andrew Wiggins, we're missing Andre Godala, we're missing Jermichael Green, we're missing James Wiseman now, we're missing Jonathan Kaminga now. Building an identity, and when those guys come back in and you've built an identity, then that allows you to... Phew. And we're right in a position to do that. I think we're four or four and a half games or something out of first place, uh, which is crazy in itself that we're that close to first place. And quite frankly, we've been awful this year. Um, and so that is... Uh, that is that, that's a bit exciting, if you will. Um, you know, for us, because now that we're starting to really right this ship, you still have a chance at everything that you could possibly want to do. Now, I said a couple weeks ago in my interview, I said it's, we're very fragile right now. And don't get it twisted. Like, it's still super fragile. And it's not that, oh, the team is something going on in the team. No, this these seasons, the NBA, it's very fragile. And building something great, it's very fragile. Anyone who's ever built anything great will tell you all it takes is one wrong thing to tear the whole thing down. And so it's still very fragile, but we're working through that. And I think it's, 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 um, it's starting to turn that corner for us. And so do I make much out of the struggles? No. I'm not overly worried about them. But like I said, I will say to you, it's something. It's not just nothing. It's not not a big deal. No, it is a big deal. But as someone who's won several plenty role games in this league, I know what it takes. I know we know what it takes. And I have all the faith that we will do it. We will do what we need to do to get it to where it needs to go. And so, no, I'm not worried about it. But I'm not. I'm also not dismissing it and saying it's nothing. It's something and it's a but it's, it's simply just a hurdle that we have to climb. It's nothing bigger 
nothing less. It's a hurdle that's that this team has faced that we have to work and get over. And I have no doubt in my mind that we will do that. In saying that, uh, this five-game win streak obviously has been without Steph Curry. How have we been able to do it? Well, I think the ball movement um, has been really good. Our ball movement is largely predicated on Steph's movement because he's always moving. And obviously, we're always trying to find him, and you're cutting, and you're pinning in. And it's great for the ball movement. Steve always preaches about how, how important ball movement is just to the aura of the team, how guys feel, um, you know, second by second, minute by minute, because that can change quickly in games. And so just preaching to what the ball movement does for a team. And quite frankly, um, with Steph being out, it's different than it with Steph on the floor. How have we been able to win five games in a row Without Steph, I'll tell you how we've been able to do it. The ball has been moving. The defensive end has been absolutely amazing. Now, we have had laws in some of these games where the defense goes to complete. But the thing that I like that I've been seeing is no matter how bad it goes, you look around and everybody's standing there ten toes down. Everybody's standing there looking like, all right, here we go. Like, let's lock up. Let's get some stops. We go down and get some buckets. And to build confidence like that, it's almost an arrogance. But quite frankly, this team hasn't done nothing for arrogance. So it, in turn, it's a belief. And it's a belief in self. It's a belief in what we're capable of. It's a belief in our defensive abilities. It's a belief in thinking and knowing that we can shut someone's water off. And because we've been able to do that, not having huge turnover games, you always give yourself a chance to win. And so I'd say maybe two, at least at least two, possibly three of these wins, we haven't shot extremely well, but we're finding a way to win. And that's because I think we really have bought into the defensive side of the ball. Uh, guys, uh, several guys are making huge improvements and strides on that side. I think Obviously, the one that we all have highlighted, it's unfortunate that he's out now, is Jonathan Kaminga. Just the strides that he's taking on the defensive end, the role that he's taking on. He's coming in, he's picking up. You know, who's your favorite point guard? Trey Young. Obviously, Trey played last night. Jonathan didn't play, but he's picking your favorite point guard up full court. At 6'8, 225 pounds, he's picking your favorite point guard up full court and it's not missing a step. What Kaminga has done and his growth on that side of the basketball is absolutely important, and don't get it twisted. It has a huge influence on this five-game win streak that we're on. Like I said, obviously he didn't play last night, but you have to feel good about the role that he's bought into and, and how he's really embracing it. Like, there's no one telling him, hey, J.K., go pick them up full court. No, he's embracing that. And I was saying this in a meeting uh, a few days ago or a week ago or whatnot, the team is starting to adjust around him. You know, it's like, oh, he's into the ball, right? Like, oh, we want to get into a switch. Kaminga's into the ball. I may not be able to switch with him, so I have to go into that coverage a little bit differently because of how, how physical he is into the ball, right? Like, that's a very small, dumb example. But the team is starting to adjust to his style of defense, but the team only adjusts to your style of defense if you're capable of causing havoc and it's worth adjusting to that and Kaminga is showing that and it is absolutely incredible to see so shout out to JK for his growth and improvement um James Wiseman is so much more improved on the defensive end than he was on the offensive end before he went down to Santa Cruz it's actually a joy to watch and it's a joy to watch him in games it's a joy when I go back and watch film just to see the things that he's doing differently and still got some things to learn as we all do I'm in year 11 I still got things to learn but to, he's also playing a lot better, and, and it's good to see that growth. Uh, Moses Moody, another young guy who's out of the rotation, working his way back into the rotation and taking advantage of that. It's great to see Moses um, and all of those guys just really taking advantage of the opportunity, but not only taking advantage, to actually you know, be able to have the opportunity to watch them and see the growth. It's a really special thing. So shout out to, the, shout out to those guys. Yeah, so I think also, um, and this last thing I'll say about the dubs, uh, obviously I, I went, I play in the second unit more with the second unit guys, and 
I really enjoy that role. Why do I enjoy that role so much? Because when you're playing in a second unit, these are guys that could, their careers can go either left or right. And it's all really predicated on how their minutes go and how they play in that time. And so for me, to have the opportunity to join that group, to, to do all that I can to make sure that that group has positive in- outcomes, that to me is a is an honor. That to me is brings me joy because quite frankly, you're helping someone else. Like for us to play well and, and Ty Jerome has been playing in that group, that can help Ty Jerome's career. And so for me, that's a very big deal and I've really embraced that role. Um, I'm enjoying it. And quite frankly, I think it's helped our team uh, and, and just finding the, the, the pieces of that puzzle to make our rotations work. Rotations are a huge deal, especially in the NBA. And you want to have your rotations right. And so I think that's been a good one for us and it's really helped us along in our season. And quite frankly, I think it's also helped bring us, all of us closer together, which is very big because you can't win if everybody's splintering. And so I think uh, that's helped bring everyone closer together. And that's important. So that's, um, I mean, that's, that's, kind of the state of the dubs that's where we are uh we're currently 20 and 18 um and and we're trending upward baby and that's all you can ask for so shout out to the dubs <laughs>